How's it going everyone? Welcome back. Hopefully everyone is having a lovely day. Steelers Bengals gonna have a little bit different of a ring to it this time around. Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow will not be playing the rest of the season. Uh, Steelers safety, best safety in the league. Minka Fitzpatrick possibly not playing in this one. Three straight weeks or three straight games now missed with a hamstring injury. I mean, we're getting close to that point in time where you say, hey, possibly come back. It was obviously a severe one for him. Uh, we haven't seen a practice really, so probably probably a good chance he misses another one. Pretty big loss, obviously, for the Steelers when you miss him in that secondary. And it's uh, a Steelers team that just a Steelers team that well, with a lot of people caught it a really sloppy game, caught it a pretty ugly game against the Cleveland Browns this past Sunday. Uh, what are you gonna get? What are you gonna get out of this Steelers offense going up against the Cincinnati Bengals defense? That is allowed some yards on the ground this season. It's allowed some points through the air this season. Um, it's a Steelers team that actually put up 30. And Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett, George Pickett, they look good against the Cincinnati Bengals last season. Can they capitalize that on again on that this season? It's going to be a little different because I think we see Cam Taylor Bird, if he's healthy, he's day-to-day. -day. If he plays, he's been playing phenomenal for the Bengals out wide there. And we could expect him to match up with him for a big chunk of the day. Jalen Warren, though, uh, a big part of this deal is often struggling, of course, is Najee Harris has not been able to get it going. And he's he's not really been able to get it going really his entire career. And we know Mike Tomlin. He's a little stubborn with the running backs and changing over. He's, he's, he's a little stubborn offensively in general. I think, uh, you know, uh, still is fun to talk to you about. Uh, what's the guy's name? I, I think we've heard of him. Maybe Matt Canada. Matt Canada. Don't want to get rid of him. <laughs> they, yeah, you know, that, that's Ben Tomlin's way, though. And as much as, you know, people on the outside look at it and joke about it and whatever, at the end of the day, Mike, Mike Tomlin finds ways to get his team to win football games. All that being said, the Steelers, as bad as they have been offensively, their defense, uh, from a yardage standpoint, hasn't been the greatest. They are a bend but don't break style defense. They're seventh ranked in points allowed this season. Still, Tomlin finds a way to win football games. But I tell you what, we brought up Jalen Warren because this guy's got 88 plus rushing yards in three straight games. He ran for over 100 yards against the Titans, over 100 yards against the Browns. And you have to believe, you have to start giving this guy a bigger role, right? He, he's got, you got to see that workload increased. He, he's got to be a 15, 20 carries guy against this Bengals defense. And I think he's got to be the reason if Pittsburgh Steelers win this football game. They've got to lean on him. Make it easy on Kenny Pickett. Make it easy on the rest of this offense and hand this guy the rock. Until he cools off, he's got that high hand, hand him the rock. Hand him the rock, hand him the rock, hand him a few more times. As far as the Bengals on offense go, we don't really know what we're going to get. I will say this with Jake Browning. Uh, we, you know, he had a historic college, uh, college career for how many yards he passed for over there. Um, we get to see that translate into the NFL, obviously, because he's backing up Joe Burrow. We've seen his ups and his downs. He showed some flashes in the preseason when he played, but he also showed some, you know, some weaknesses, some issues. And of course, you're going to get that out of a backup quarterback. No quarter, no backup. You don't really expect a backup quarterback to come in there and be anything close to your starter. If he can give you, if he can give you 70%, you're happy with that. That being said, though, you know, there's always that, there's always the flash in the pan. There's always that hope to say, hey, there are guys that come in there as a backup. They get their chance. They get their chance to shine and they take it and they run with it. I mean, this is one opportunity. This is his one opportunity to take that starting job. He ain't going to take it from Joe Burrow, but earn a starting job in the NFL. Is he prepared? Is he ready? Is he going to come in here and play his best? Because he's got a chance to do it. He's got he's got a half a season to do it. And I think when you look at the Bengals offense and the way Zach Taylor's game plan is and how simplex it's really been so far this season, where it's a lot of dink and dunks. It's a lot of quick screen passes it's a lot of, I wouldn't say hand the football off, we don't do a lot of that, but you know, there's a lot of designed easy passes for the quarterback to get the offense moving. And I think from that perspective, that's something Jake Browning can do. I mean, we've seen him do it a little bit against the Ravens. That's something he can do if they, they can make that an effective way to move the football down the field. Now, the issue with the Zach Taylor game plan um, if you want to call it the game plan, I call it, I call it Joe Burrow being Joe Burrow, is Jake Browning can't be Joe Burrow. And when a lot, a lot of Bengals wins come from when this, the game plan gets scrapped, Joe Burrow just goes out there and runs for his life, makes a big player. It's a two-minute drill. Joe Burrow controls the offense, audibles out of place, changes the place, runs the team up and down. And that's a big part of the Bengals' offense. And that part of the offense, I don't think Jake Browning's built for. I don't think he's built for that. I don't think he's built for the pressure. I think 
Um, you know, if the Steelers get some third and longs here, second and longs, they force this pass rush or give this pass rush a chance to get to Jake Browning. He could make some mistakes. He's not always the quickest with his reads. And again, you know, that's going to happen to the guy who hasn't a lot of snaps in the NFL. He's still learning, progressing, but he can learn and progress. And that's the thing Bengals fans have to be kind of um, excited about, if you will, is, you know, there's always a lot of talk like, let's get a veteran quarterback. Let's get this backup or this backup. The fact of the matter is, you know what you're going to get out of those guys. And they're a backup for a reason. You want Colt McCoy? No, I don't want Colt McCoy. <laughs> I don't. Uh, you know what I do want, though? I think Jake Browning, this guy's been in the system all year. He's had a chance to learn the system. He's had a chance to watch under one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And he's got a guy that he, he still has a lot of potential. We don't know what his ceiling is yet because he hasn't had a chance to reach his ceiling yet. So I love, I've always loved the idea to give the keys to a guy that's got a chance to grow and prove. Uh, there ain't much of a scouting report on him. So the Steelers, again, it's hard for him to game plan. If you're the Bengals in this one, you got a chance. You got a golden chance to get ahead early. And they need to. I think they need to get ahead early. They need to get ahead early so they can run the football with Joe Mixon. Mixon, who in the past has had some good success running the football against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he needs to have that success again. And the Bengals need to get to an early lead. Will they? Will they get to an early lead? I think that's the next question. I don't I don't know if they do. I think the, we, the new effect is huge. If the Bengals can't score in their first drive, though, I'm worried. I am worried a lot. I think that's where the Steelers could quickly take over uh, this football game because, again, you're going to throw some stuff at Mike Tomlin and this team and his defense that they aren't prepared for and you wouldn't think they've seen a lot of with Jake Browning being a quarterback. And there's going to be the adjustment phase as the game progresses. I think as the game progresses, we see the typical, you know, Zach Taylor offense where it stalls out for, you know, four, five, six drives. But that's okay. I think if there's ever an opportunity, it's against the Pittsburgh Steelers offense that struggled throughout the season, where it'll be okay as long as they can keep the game within reach, well, as long as they keep the game close to where they can continue to pound the rock, where they can continue to give their defense to cause a turnover or two, they'll stay in this game. But if they, again, they fall behind early, Steelers start to jump out of that 7 nothing lead, all of a sudden it's 10 to, uh, the game's probably over. Because once they jump ahead to that lead and TJ Watt gets going, oh, good luck. Good luck. TJ Watt being one of the best at what he does, and that is rush the passer. And you get he starts to get into Jake Browning's face. He starts to get him a little uneased up there. Oh, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be scary. And yeah, and that's not a shot at Jake Brown. That's just what TJ Watt does. There's a reason the Steelers find ways to win football games. TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, obviously, if he's healthy, are the big, are big reason. Guy goes out there and changes games. Nonetheless, I think overall, Steelers win this one 20 to 10. Love y'all's thoughts. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.